Oh, right. Last time I saw you, you had a moustache. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, and, and not only that, I was speaking with uh, an English accent. I was doing Broadway last year. Yeah. Uh, it's a new show that felt like an old show. It's kind of like a, a like a Noel Coward uh, spoof. And we were all doing these great posh accents. And I, of course, I had to grow the little sort of yeah. Clark Gable mustache. And you were out moustached on stage by a bigger moustache. We all, all three of us uh, had, had stashes in that show. And they were real. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't yeah. rip off. No, they, no, were no, they were all real. Oh, yeah. Did you worry about being able to grow one? Have you have you dabbled in the moustache world before? Yeah, I have. In fact, I had a ridiculous one for a Canadian film about three years ago that just was absurd, like like Burton Cummings sort of mustache, and I uh, like a hockey mustache. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that was that's really unattractive. I, I I couldn't wait to get that one off. But this one was like a nice little sort of. Yeah, I loved it. I it loved was it. very Clark Gable. I, <laughs> I saw you on a couple of um, U.S. talk shows. Yeah, yeah, and Jimmy Kimmel and other stuff, and I thought, no, it is Clark Gable. It was it was you. You carried it off with a plum. Let Thank me tell you. you. Thank Aaron. you. Mustaches throw people. I mean, every guy <laughs> under forty these days has a beard, and it's just it's it's like it's like Fleetwood Mac all over again. Yes. But a mustache, <laughs> unless you're a fireman, people don't know what to do yeah. or where to look. Yeah, or what you do. Uh, for a day job exactly <laughs> everyone goes to porn and I'm like what porn are you watching yeah. that people have, still have mustaches or That's... wrestling perhaps maybe a, the odd wrestle the odd wrestler combine but I mean, the two yeah fill your boots <laughs> um, so Broadway was good Cottage was good uh, great fun so it was, it, was a, it was a sexy British farce and yeah. you're having all the fun on Broadway exactly, exactly. that's super cool um, you're here now you're in a musical yeah yeah, this is a new musical yes. by a woman I've known for years, a brilliant singer herself named Chalina Kennedy, out of Canada, like I am. and um, But she's written her own. It is a very modern musical, six characters, uh, very much about modern love. Girl leaves her husband for another woman, then leaves the woman for another man, then has a baby with him, and the oh first guy gosh. raises the baby. All sorts of... Uh, it's like TikTok gone mad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but great songs. She writes great pop songs and... Uh, and and it's all brand new. So if you if you if you come out on the twenty fifth and sixth, you will hear some great new songs. So this is the Drury Lane um, Theatre Royal Drury Lane, twenty fifth and twenty sixth of March. Lwtheaters.co.uk. Lwtheaters.co.uk. Blink and you'll miss the tickets. Blink and you'll miss the musical. I mean, you know. How come, you know, why not, of course, but how come just the two dates? Because you happen to do all the stuff as if it's going to run for years and years and years anyway. It's everything's expensive these days. Right. You've got to give it a got to give it a whirl. We actually did a recording of it. I say we. I'm, I'm only on part of it. But there was kind of a proof of concept album last year that Chalina produced with uh, Daniel Edmonds, our uh, our musical producer. And it, it really it was mostly Broadway stars singing these songs, right. and it gave a real taste of what it could be. And this will be. I thought this was going to be just sort of standing at, at music stands concert version. This is like a full on. Two nights only production with sets and costumes, and when we're I got an eight piece orchestra. It's gonna be great. That's I mean, it sounds spectacular. I remember when um, Led Zeppelin got back together and they played the O2, and everybody went. I mean, you know, clearly Led Zeppelin are maybe you know, with the exception of like the Beatles and yeah. oh. The Rolling Stones, and maybe that's probably it. Led Zeppelin, the most famous band. Did you of, see that show? Yeah, I went. There. I was oh. lucky enough to get there. I had to break in to get to get a seat. Yeah. But the the audience was like, it was like Paul McCartney was there. You two were there, and I remember Paul McGuinness, who was U 2s manager at the yeah. time. He leaned over to me and said, "There's no way this is a one off, because it took so much, and it was a one off. They didn't do it again. And I'm sort of thinking the same thing with you guys, because it's all the effort, all the sets. I mean, you know, well done, but but we want more. We want, want more. more. <laughs> well, let's see if we. Uh, hopefully, that that's exactly the case. Is it like a pilot show almost? Yeah, I really? think this that's is. You know, and it, it could be for a further West End, or it could be for for Broadway. It's just getting a taste of. Does it work for an audience? Yeah, yeah, Are they yeah, following yeah. it? Do they love it? Why wouldn't it? Wild about you. How are you feeling about it? What's how, how do you feel? You know, I feel. I mean, the, the my co stars in this show are like West End vets. Right. They're all. It's they sort of stumble out of bed and sound brilliant. Wow. And uh, I just flew in. <laughs> I was Oscar weekend last week, and there's always a bunch of parties. And then I get on a plane, so I'm sad, I'm a little rough. I'll get yeah. there. Okay, um, I'm glad you brought up the Oscars because I saw all the pics uh, yeah. and you were on the red carpet. What's it like? Well, so I, I, I've mentioned this many times in, in press, but um, my, one of my best friends from high school is David Furnish. Yeah. So uh, 
I, 25 years now, we've gone to uh, to David and Elton's uh, party that raising money for the AIDS Foundation, and it's always great. It's yeah. a little Groundhog Day. It's it's the same. If you go every year, it's the same party. But I, it's so reliably wonderful. Um, and they raised this this year over ten million dollars. We raised so cool. So it's always a big event, um, and and it's supposed to be a viewers like a, you're supposed to watch the show on on big screens. No one watches. Everyone just drinks. And I always end up beside Heidi Klum, which is not a how, how not would you a rate this year's Oscars? A as a show. B um, to do you know as the, who won what? So first of all, A as a show out of ten, what do you think? Well, like I say, we weren't really paying attention at the uh, at the AIDS Foundation party, but it looked great. I always loved Jimmy Kimmel um, hosting. I thought he was um, fantastic. Yeah, he's he's he, and it's like it came on under. I mean, I'm so used to <laughs> being frustrated yeah. and and furious at the end that they open it's the first, Tuesday the first few awards yeah. last five minutes each and at the end they're rushing through like they, oh that we didn't know we only had three hours yeah yeah every year the same thing this year they did it so much better I thought the um when he read out the tweet from Donald Trump that was, <laughs> that was isn't it past your jail time oh it's so yeah. funny man it's it's it so it's funny. funny. It's funny if you live over here. Over there, it's getting it's, dire. Yeah, it's getting close as well, isn't it's it? It's so freaking <laughs> dire to think. We all we all thought four years ago. Okay, that's yeah. done. Yeah. We're done. Okay, that was the warning. That horrible thing happened, yeah. and we're done. Yeah, it's coming now back. It's happening again. It's coming back, man. All right, well, it's Friday. It's Friday. You're here for, for, for sunnier reasons. Uh, now, many of the team, because uh, they're like 12 years old, uh, hadn't heard of Will and Grace. So this time I'm going, you got to watch Will and Grace. you got to watch Will and Grace. So uh, Ozzy Jane and Tilly and Felix, they watched episode one, season one, Will and Grace, 1997. And they are in <laughs> love with it. And they've got like the next... It, it does get better, guys. Your, it you really it gets does better? get better. Shut my oh. hair gets better, that's for sure. Oh my goodness! I mean, I know you. I know you've had a million conversations about Will and Grace, but we have to have another one. Yes. Um, uh, you, the, the your audition story for Will and Grace is interesting, isn't it? Tell us about that. Um, well, there, there's a couple of great ones. I mean, I I'd been around for a few years down there. I was already mid thirties, and uh, I was due. I was like, I I was in love with Seinfeld. I had auditioned for Friends. It was Did like, you actually... it, yeah, I, I had a callback for for Ross. And uh, years later, the same director as that of that show directed Will and Grace. And I said, Jimmy, you know, I came pretty close on Ross. And he said, oh, honey, they wrote the part for Schwimmer. You were wasting your time. So, uh, but, <laughs> but, but, so room, it was my they? turn. I read this thing and I thought it's mine. I know this part's mine. Yeah. Seven, I don't know, six, seven auditions, uh, and I got it. But the, yeah, the first audition, the first audition, I, I just came in. I was very me. It was a park bench scene with Grace, and I sort of finished. And I looked up at the guy that created the show, who was gay, and he said, "Okay, just so you know, you never need to be gayer than that." And I went, <laughs> "Huh? Oh, thank you." Gay than um, what? Gay, gay, than gay what? Gayer than exactly what I had just <laughs> done. Apparently, I said, "Yeah, my, my my father has said that to me throughout my life." Uh, and, and but the other one was just that then I had the part for like a month and we couldn't find Grace. We couldn't find her. We couldn't find her. And that final day that we finally met Messing was this whole elaborate scheme at, at Jimmy's house with actresses coming in and out. They weren't supposed to know that each other existed. And I was I was a mess from shooting all night with William Shatner, of all things. So. Yeah, it was a it was a journey to get there, but you had to put yourself on hold, though, didn't you? Because you you when you it was pilot season at the time. It was one of the first pilots of the pilot season. The pilot season is about six to eight weeks, is it something like that? Yeah. And and so you you did one, and then you did a couple of others, and then the director said, no, no, you're going to get this, or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a bit of a break where uh, this show came up very early right. in uh, in pilot season. It was kind of early December of '97, and to commit to something that early and not know that it, what's going to around the bend was was a bit of a act of faith. I yeah. kind of pulled away briefly, and um, <clears throat> and then the, uh, Max, who created the show, called me at my home in Vancouver. And he said, are you not doing this? And I said, well, I'm not sure yet, Max. I might. And he said, this is the dumbest mistake you've ever made in your life. <laughs> and he was right. Yeah. Well, you hadn't made it yet, had you? I, I mean, that's the yet, thing. But, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, that period, because it was the Friends period, wasn't it? It was Sex yeah. in the City. It was Friends. I mean, it was the halcyon days of those kind of, those, I mean, those kind of shows, they don't exist anymore. It's like those amazing um, sort of dramedies they made in the 80s, those movies that were comedies, but without the jokes, you know, like like um, uh, Beverly Hills Cop and 48 mm. Hours and 
and Pretty Woman and and um, the, the uh, Michael Douglas movies. They were all Indiana Jones, funny but not comedies. And then you hit this sort of ninety two to sort of two thousands almost mm-hmm. cutoff point at uh, this mega time. This and what what was that like? Were you aware of the fact that you were that you were in this sort of pur- purple patch, this multiplex purple patch of these comedies that the likes of which will never be seen again? Kind of were, yeah, because of, I mean, in many ways it had started with Cheers in the States uh, years before, but uh, on NBC in particular, um, we suddenly had Seinfeld and we had Friends and we had Mad About You and and it was called Must See TV. That was the slogan they used. And to be part of that at the time, we were aware. We were aware that it was the it was the best of times, and um, and they were gang shows. They were all that's what they had in common, wasn't it? They were ensembles. Yep, they were all ensembles, uh, all featuring new people. Yeah, yeah. You know that Frasier would come into know, the... and Frasier yeah. was very much part of it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, wow. and uh, and so and it was a time when, and I'm sure it's it's the same over here. There's this that you get to discover people on television you know you don't not everybody has to be a big star and and that's why those ensemble comedies worked so well because people still to this day call me will because of course you know, what, and like, you don't mind yeah well, it's like well it's yeah like, I, it'll I, be I, on I my tombstone call probably it myself from calling i've been thinking about it well, don't call him will don't call him will don't call him will don't call him will i remember going to vegas and there was a i, I we were going to a uh, restaurant and I, and I walked up and the woman said oh Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've watched you. Oh my God. You have no idea. I've watched every single episode a thousand times, like a thousand times. My boyfriend and I, a thousand times I've seen your show. And I said, oh, that's so great. She said, are you here tonight? I said, yeah, I've got a reservation. And she said, oh, name? And I said, you've seen the show a thousand times and you've never noticed my name? I'm just the way sorry. It's, no, I, it's, I, don't, I don't look at that crap. Yeah, you will always be well so. to me. <laughs> but it was like, I mean, that, that time was like the 60s was for rock and roll. And, you know, and it, it sort of stopped. It's like everybody agreed to stop almost at the same time. Um, looking at Kirby Enthusiasm now, which is in its 12th season, yeah. and it finishes here, uh, or the last one is broadcast, the last new one is broadcast on, I think it's April the 8th or 9th. You know, a whole different kind of punk kind of, but they're, they're actually saying that that's going to be the end of another kind of era, another kind of era of comedy. You know, your offices, you know, yeah. that kind of offbeat yeah, comedy. Yeah, what, what came in sort of at the same time, but at the tail end of us was The Office, 30 Rock, uh, yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm, where there wasn't a live audience, where it was a single no camera. Laugh track. Uh, yeah, well, we didn't have a laugh no, track. No, you didn't. We had so, a live some audience. Other shows did, yeah. But yeah, um, but, but yeah, and it was a much more post ironic, it, yeah. uh, it was a new thing. Oh, and, I loved it. Love it too, yeah. but it kind of killed the thing that we were doing, and it's very hard now. I wonder to do what that. happens next because there's no. The, I mean, I'm sure there are. You know, I'm an old fart now, uh, or older. You know, that annoys people who are really old. Um, so I'm getting. We're all getting older, but um, I wonder where the new shoots are for the new vibe, the new genre. You know, because it because music wise, you know, it was it was pop music. It was it was funk it was psychedelic it was prog rock then we had the 80s bangers and then we had guitar the 90s mm-hmm. and it's the same thing for comedy you know you start with mash then you get to, somehow you get to cheers mm-hmm. and, you know you start with phil silvers i would imagine yeah, i wonder well, what's i, wonder I what, didn't but yes yeah, i wonder what's next any ideas well like I, I i mean i used the term post ironic but even that's uh, a hackneyed term now it's like i are, are we all too smart for our own good yeah, that yeah. we don't know how to do a good old-fashioned comedy anymore? When you see some of the variety shows, both uh, in, in Britain and in the in the U.S., from the 60s and 70s, yeah. you can't do that anymore. No. I mean, you can't do the Sonny and Cher show or Dean Martin. That, that's gone yeah. because we're all too smart and, and uh, too clever. So I don't know how we continue to do that yeah. Um and even like my son's 21, when I see what, what younger people are doing um, themselves, the, the DUI shows that they're doing on their phone, that they're doing for TikTok or whatever, I don't even understand it, some of it. And, I, and my, <laughs> I, I, my son will show me something and I'll go, is that funny? And he goes, yeah, dad. Yeah. That's funny. Like, okay, all right. I guess I'm. Yeah, and you're doing what I do. You're, you're thinking, is it funny, as opposed to just letting it either be funny or not funny. It's like we're having to think about it. Yeah. It's like, oh God, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, it's so everything's so inside. What and about it, Ted Lasso? You seen Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso's great. Yeah, Ted Lasso's great. I mean, I he's got a little good. sentimental for me. Yeah. It got too sentimental. For yeah, me. but at least well, at least they stopped after three, which is good. After yeah, three, three series, which is yeah. excellent. On your bio, you are described as American Canadian. 
are you American Canadian or are you Canadian American? I'm Canadian, Canadian first. You're Canadian first. Yeah. And what's the vibe up? Are you used to live in Canada? Part time. I'm in Vancouver a part of the time, in LA yeah. the other part. We all love a bit of Canada, and Gentleman. we all love a Canadian. Yeah. Why do we love you so much? <laughs> uh, because we worship at your feet and are on your coattails. I mean, that we we were always somewhere in between. My my upbringing in Toronto was. You know, the Queen is on our money. We we were watching Monty Python before anybody uh, in, in North America. But we're also watching all the American shows and wanting to be that too. So we're just sort of the wannabe kid that that's that wants our Brits and we wants our we wants our Americans but Canada's too. Canada's rocking. I mean, a lot of American shows and films are made in Canada. Now, yeah, but I mean, it, it, the area where it really took off first was music. I mean, uh, you were mentioning Bare Naked Ladies before, who yeah. are friends of mine. I adore them. No but, way! Oh, yeah. No way! I, I, they, in fact, we had the same French tea. I had a French teacher that taught uh, Stephen and Ed uh, drama Stop in, the, it yeah, now. in the 90s. It's true. But... Um, 90s? No, in the 80s. Um, but but in it, whereas Canadian television and uh, and film has, have taken longer for Canadians to embrace, the music... I mean, you think of just the 80s alone, women, solo women in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Sarah McLaughlin, Celine Dion, yeah. uh, Katie Lang, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Shania Twain. It goes on and on. Alanis Morissette. All at the same time having gigantic uh, worldwide hits and and the bands that have come out of Canada um it's it's pretty amazing the Canadian music. Who else do you hang with? Because you mentioned David and uh, Elton and Bare Naked Ladies. You sound like you're in a cool groove, man. You got a cool thing going on. Uh there's a really fun thing that we've actually christened uh the CADS which it stands for the Character Actors Dining Society and it's just a bunch of guys my age and a little older that eat when we can and it's it's Jason Alexander and Richard Kind and LeVar Burton and Brian Cranston and uh, Noah Wiley it's, it's just it's a great group of guys that have just been around the block that's I've seen the photos yeah that's a hang isn't it yeah oh it's a great hang and it mixes and matches depending on who's, how, how who's do you busy. decide the date and the venues of those particular spontaneous hangs um, it's they're not that spontaneous but it's uh, we, we just have we have a text chain that is it we, a regular is it like a once a month thing or we try and is it a men's group? Is it sort of an unofficial men's group as well? Do you, yeah. do you, do you uh, talk it all out? We, it, yeah, ish. I mean, it wasn't it sort of meant to be just guys, but it sort of was at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then once in a while, if somebody's wife or something drops by, she's like the Angie Dickinson of the... There's oh, an, my gosh. There's an ancient re- reference for you. Um, but she, it's, yeah, the Shirley MacLaine she'll be. And where are we talking, Laurel Canyon? Where, where are we hanging? Uh, several restaurants. Okay, in, in obviously, LA. hopefully, you're not, you're not, not hopefully, but it'd be great if you were. Uh, you're not going to be there, so give them a shout out. Where, if people are going to Los Angeles, where might they want to go for a, a good lunch? Oh, wow. Well, if you want to see, you know, guys like us sitting around in the back room, uh, Craig's on Melrose. Shout out to Craig, who uh, who always hosts us beautifully. Uh, Musso and Frank's is fun, old school. Um, Did you get us to Beverly Glen? Would you go up there or not? Uh, there's a great place in Beverly Glen that I haven't been to. It's in like a, years. a mini Air 101. There. Yeah, right. I, I'm I'm in a, a, an area like of Studio City. So nice. it's, and it's it's like this morning. This morning I'm out in Hammersmith, and getting here was you know like like I had to take an air balloon. It was so freaking far. <laughs> but and the same in L.A. When I'm in my area, and people say. Meet you in Santa Monica for dinner. I'm like Santa Monica. <laughs> yeah. What am I thirty? No, I'm not leaving. I'm, it's just so. It's so far in traffic. We stay in Venice every summer, and um, uh, you know, I said to my friend, I said, I'll come and see you in uh, Malibu Canyon. He said, Really? Not on a Friday, you won't. Yeah, it's like three hours. Uh, it's not that far away, but the cars, the traffic, the traffic and all this kind of traffic's stuff. crazy. I've got to tell you, Hammersmith. It's not that far away. Did you come in a car? Yeah. yeah, that's probably why. It's, it's actually quite near. Um, so you're here for a while. You, you're in. Are you in digs or a hotel? Got a nice little. Uh, got a nice little flat for the next ten days. Nice. That's cool, great, isn't yeah. it? And you, you know London quite well. You've never worked here before, though. Never worked here. Just uh, come over for press and stuff like that. But I. Uh... I, I, yeah, I, I would. I know it relatively well, but have I really explored everywhere now? And I won't get to this time simply because we're rehearsing. How, how much of the day does it take up? Eight hours. Eight hours. So what time? We're kind we of start, ten, ten to six. S- like as soon as I leave you, I'll go so right into rehearsal. So it's a regular working day in a yeah. way. Um, yeah, six so days you, a week. I'm going to write some hangs down for you because it's only fair. Great, please you got, do. You, got, you borrow markets here. You know, one of the greatest food markets in the world, outside yeah. the door. It's like awesome. Door. I did see that as we Camden pulled in. Market. You've been to Camden Market. In the Camden Market, but Cam- it's, been, it's been years. Yeah, Notting Hill. 
Ah, uh, it's been again been years. So you, you so you've yeah. done it. You've done you've it, a, but I, it's been a long time. Sense and a flavour. And what else might you want to get up to? Because we, we lots of famous actors, not lots of famous, not famous, but lots of actors and some famous actors. And if they if if they are in a production, they will often try to achieve something whilst. Um, engaging with the production in their downtime. So, for example, there's that great thing online that if you do something for 18 minutes a day, every day oh, of yeah. the year, you'll be 95% better at it than 95% of the world. And it doesn't take that much stuff, you know, that much effort. That's any, crazy. Any of that going on? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm trying to, you know, post Christmas to, to do some exercises but 18 minutes you look, god you look oh, uh, <laughs> do you know that phrase i don't but i'm going to use it from <laughs> okay, now on okay it's a very anglophile phrase all right <laughs> come on let's sell some more tickets wild about you the musical in concert the royal uh theater royal drury lane 25th and 26th of march starring this man here eric mccormick and his mates lwtheaters.co.uk uh come on get, get get let's give us give us one more minute on why people should come and and Get a ticket now. Well, first of all, I hear that Drury Lane has been revamped like $80 million, Stunning. 80 million pounds. So best. I cannot wait to see that, and neither yeah. can you mm -hmm. if you haven't been. Uh, the music in this thing is great. The singers, uh, me aside, the singers <laughs> in the show are so freaking great, um, and I'm falling in love with them. I've only been working for two days. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. You can be on the ground floor of something very yeah, big. Yeah, we can get you in. We can get, yeah. that like, that's a phrase, isn't it? When you're yeah. raising funds. Like, get you on the ground floor. Get you on the thing? ground floor, yeah. Oh, my goodness me. Um, have you seen, have you seen on Netflix, The Gentleman? No, but I heard it was oh, great. Somebody was talking about it the other day. Is it, the, have you seen the that, movie? Yeah, no. So the, there's the movie. It's a Guy Ritchie movie. Lock, oh, okay. Stock, oh, yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. I thought that's what you meant. No, okay. Well, and, no. Here's and now it's a series. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Eric. So you, my friend, you've got the movie to watch, right? Already jealous. Can't re can't rewatch it for the first time because that's not what happens. No. Uh, but they've got this new eight part TV show, which is it's outrageous. All right, I'm in. You would like, have you seen Saltburn? Yes, loved. I love Saltburn. How out of ten? How much? Because people love and hate. I think Saltburn is one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah. Some people don't get oh, it at all. I, oh, I give it a nine, and I oh. particularly because I didn't know anything about it going in, no, which I, it's just died. hard to do these days. Yes, and you can't unsee it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, quickly about the Oscars uh, uh, from the top 10 movies um, Poor Things I haven't poor seen things. Poor Things Poor you Things seen, was, you was my poor things. I loved Poor Things The Holdovers uh, lo I love The Holdovers yeah yeah uh, those, are, those are probably my two. And another one called Past Lives, which Past if you Lives, haven't very good. seen. Okay. Yeah. And there's a few others that I've never heard of. Okay, that's yeah. all that. Um, anything else? Anything else to tell us? Come on, Absolutely Eric. nothing. Come on, Eric. Not a damn thing, Chris. And when you when you go back to where you live, um, what are you gonna, what, what's next? What's... Well, I do have one more thing. Yes, uh, that will actually bring me through London for a second. But I'm doing, uh, I'm doing a six-part new series for BBC. Yes. That we're shooting... All summer, all spring and summer in the Canary Islands. It's called Nine Dead Bodies in a Mexican Morgue. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yes, Anthony Horowitz uh, wrote it, uh, and Eleventh uh, Hour Productions here in in London is producing. I can't wait. We start in May, and it's it's a great. It's kind of a plane crash meets Agatha Christie murder mystery. It's really fun. It sounds great, man. It's gonna be. Fun. Are you still having all the fun? As, I'm having as much fun as as one can have. Good for you. And Right from the start. See, now he didn't need to do that. Control room round of applause because he did not need to do that. <laughs> that was that was a bummer. So you didn't need to do that. I didn't, particularly at 10 a.m. in the morning. I think that means you may have enjoyed your visit here. I, I may have had a good time. All right. Is there a loot bag? Oh, yeah. Um, that was very Richard Marksy. Uh, there's a little Richard Marx yeah, like, like, on there, yeah. breathy, yeah. getting there, I can yeah. do this. I, you know, if you want more, scream if you want to go faster, that kind of thing. <laughs> Who do you love musically? Oh, I grew up with, uh, I grew up pretending to be Freddie Mercury in my bedroom. Oh, um, by the way, you do a great Freddie Mercury. Oh, thank you very much. You would. Um, Get the old moustache back on there. Yeah, no, I used I used to do. I mean, in fact, I, we'd be recording in front of an audience for Will and Grace, and uh, I would sometimes, if I wasn't in the next scene, I would dress up as Freddie. You would not. <laughs> yeah, shut up. There's 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 footage of it of me just uh, aping Freddie out in the. Did audience. you ever see them live? Uh, oh yeah, you did. Seventy eight. Where? Uh, in Toronto. No. And then in eighty. 
78. All right, so 78. 78 is... was the jazz album oh that just come gosh. out. Oh my gosh, best album? Yeah, I Maybe. love. It's, it's, I, it's, I love. It's not an argument we I need to have. But 78, they were, I mean, obviously Live Aid, blah, 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 yakety yak and all that, but 78 was vintage. Yeah, I'm, I'm 70s queen. From mostly by the time we got to Live Aid it was getting into uh, favourite band uh, hmm? Queen favourite band I think so yeah yeah, yeah. Queen Yellow. Elton um, yeah Beatles. Billy Joel yeah okay Beach Boys or Beatles well for me uh, uh, Beatles yeah, yeah I would say so there's, Just, a, there's a few key Beach Boys songs but there's that whole thing about Pet Sounds isn't there yeah. yeah Pet Sounds versus Sgt Pepper which yeah. I've never got I've tried to pretend that I get it but I don't get it I've got to be honest um, front page of the Times 2 section and the Times newspaper is made in this building um, they're talking about the fact that Mark Knopfler who's on the show next week to talk about oh that's the, exciting he, he's got he's, he's formed a new super group and he's coming on the show to ask me to be in it <laughs> no no sorry just to talk about the fact that I'm not in it uh, and so they've discussed their favourite guitarists of all time all the, all the journalists have had a bit of fun and they said, oh, I think this, I think that. Um, but they didn't, they've not included, right? I might go, I might have to go downstairs to the 13th floor and have a word with them. They haven't included so Brian a, May? No, Brian May's in. Good. Right. Guess who they haven't included? This is a fun game. Right. Guess who they haven't included? Three, three unbelievable guitarists not included. And the, by the way, they usually know their onions, these guys. Well, Clapton's in there. No, he's not in there. Good God. What is wrong with these people? Seriously, um, it's it's British politics. It's fried all their brains because um, we we're having our own issues here. Uh, you are I know. aware of that. I do know that. Yeah. I do. Um, uh, so so no, you're correct. Eric Clapton not in there. Right? Who else is not in there? Oh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan isn't in there. By the way, well done, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Wow. Isn't in there. Fascinating. I know. Uh, so for Stevie Ray Vaughan, go back to the 60s and see. Hendrix. Hendrix is Hendrix, in there. Not in there, right? How soon they forget. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with these guys. Seriously, get some more coffee down to the 13th floor. <laughs> and and also Jeff Beck's line there. And all the other guitarists. Well, just, you're talking to them. They haven't even heard of Will and Grace. They don't know who Jeff Beck is. No, of course they But the point is they do. They do. This is the thing. Because they're rock and roll kids, so they sort of oh, steep in rock and roll. Oh, so they're working with me, and they, they have to know Jeff Beck, who Jeff Beck is, that. otherwise they they're to fired. Uh, but talking about Jeff Beck gives me goosebumps because all the other guitarists say he is the guitarist, guitarist. Who's the actor's actor? Oh, who's the actor's actor? I don't know. I've, I've got I've got weird influences. Come on, like my favorite influence, comedically, but also weirdly as an actor, is Woody Allen. Wow. I, I steal more from Woody Allen on a daily basis, and I know that's not I'm not politically correct in saying it anymore, but uh, just as as the '70s stuff had had musically had such an influence on me, uh, Woody's films from the '70s and into the '80s are what I most derived my sense of humor from. And is it true that all the ums and the ahs are in the script? Is that right? You know, when he says, I, um, I, I, I don't know. About I, you wouldn't see them on the page, right. but when you look at his stand up from the '60s. And you hear the, all of those, yes. which is what I and I was when I was twelve. I was listening to his album called Stand Up, which was a collection of all of his mid sixties club dates. Uh, and then you hear the same bit from another date, and the ums and ahs are in exactly oh the gosh. same. So I was like kind of like Bob Newhart. There was just a sense of there's a way to do this, and the more natural it sounds, uh, the funnier it is. Did you ever get to see Robin Williams in concert? Uh, not in concert, but I had... Uh, it was right after 9-11. There was a huge charity concert in Vegas that I was asked to be part of. And afterwards, I sat... At, like, at late hours, I sat with Robin Williams and Dennis Miller and just listened to them talk. And I just... I, I barely said anything. And yeah... <laughs> And Robin was just so sweet and yeah. so funny and so complimentary. He was one of those guys that there are certain people that knock m me out in terms of they don't have to be. Paul McCartney. Yeah, yeah. I did something with Paul McCartney in, in L.A. And he came up and I was, you know, trying to just find be, words be able to, speak. to put words in a certain order yes. so that they made sense. Yes. And he was like... Um, he said, oh, I loved, I, I used to watch Will and Grace with, with my daughter. And oh, I love the new show. What's it called? Perception. And I, the fact that Paul McCartney, A, knew Perception, but B, would say something nice about it. Yeah. 
and I just Beatles were great, and, and I mean, I, <laughs> Beatles were great. He's so he was so generous, and I think that's that's what oh, I'm always amazed by is when the big ones are are as generous as they could possibly. By the way, be. lovely story. Thanks for those bonus stories. Yeah. Um, now that you've mentioned your Robin Williams after party after show conversations and you Paul McCartney things I mean what's the fanciest thing you've ever been invited to do or the fanciest company that you've ever I mean I, you, it, would, it would have to be uh, it was over here and it was uh, Elton and David's wedding wow and did you play uh, a part uh, well I sang I sang at their um, I sang at their bachelor party in a, in a Soho nightclub the night before right yeah I sang a dirty song Ian McKellen did drag wow uh, it was it was pretty great um, I, I remember walking in, I'd just flown over and I walked into this very, it was seedy daytime, like 11 in the morning club in Soho, which hadn't been cleaned up from the night before yet. Perfect. And yet the, the music seemed to still be playing. It was Pet Shop Boys. And then I looked over at the stage and it was actually the Pet, the Pet Shop, Shop Boys, Boys rehearsing for their song that they were going to do at the, at the bachelor party. Oh. But the next night was the wedding and it was, you know, it was coaches and it was just insane. And I, my, my friend Helga and I, she was also in class with David and I 40 years ago. And we, we walk up and we walk into their Windsor home. And the first person I see is Elvis Costello. And I, and we'd met one time before and I'm staring and he goes, oh, hello, Eric, you know, George. And it was George Martin. And I went, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I haven't met, haven't met George, and and it just got fancier from there. Yeah, and and somewhere along the way, we get paid as well. It is the best yeah, job in the world. It, it is nuts. The, we, how lucky are we? How lucky are we, Vassal? Yeah. Yes, we're also lucky, aren't we? Uh, the reason, the primary reason, Eric McCormick is with us this morning, and he can stay as long as he likes, is because Wild About You, this brand new musical in concert, which seems like it's getting everything thrown at it for all the right reasons. Uh, blink and you'll miss the tickets, and you'll miss the show if you're not careful. Drury Lane at the Theatre Royal there. 25th, 26th of March, lwtheatres.co.uk for a ticket. But quickly before you go, only because we're running out of time. Um, sorry about this, Eric. No. Uh, Will and Jack, the podcast. Yes. About a, a year ago, Sean Hayes came to me and said, everyone's doing these rewatch podcasts. Yes of their own shows why don't we do ours and I said I said it's great well we can talk forever because we you know we've both seen the show a thousand times and he says I've never actually watched it I said you've never actually watched <laughs> our show so for me it's a rewatch podcast for Sean it's kind of a, a watch podcast yeah. and but we just we just yak about each episode we've done about 48 now and uh, they're all available to you wherever you get your podcast it's called Just Jack and Will yeah and Fra Fraser's come back hasn't it to great aplomb it's I, yeah, I, I have not seen I the I haven't seen either. I mean, any chance of any talk of any whispers of anything coming back as far as we're we did our We did our reboot a few years ago. We did three seasons. It was did great. Did you like that? Loved it. Enjoyed it? Loved it. Good for you. And uh, But I think that's probably All the right. end and of that. All right, and Sean, of course, who's Jack in uh, Will and Grace, mm -hmm. uh, he is part of this mega podcast, isn't he? What's oh, this? God. It's... What is this thing? Do we want to talk about this? Not what? really, because it's upsetting. <laughs> It's upsetting. They sold it once for a trillion dollars, and then they sold it a second time just recently for another they, they trillion. They out Rogan, Joe Rogan, from a deal <clears throat> point of view, haven't they? Oh my God, it's unbelievable. So, so what is this? Three of them? What is it again? There's three of them, and they just uh, it's it's Will Arnett and, and Jason Bateman and Sean, and they just yak with a guest to sta stadiums and arenas sometimes. Sometimes, have yeah. you been on it? Yet? Uh, no, I have not been on well, it. Well, that, that's rude. Yeah. Oh, well, if any if any of them are listening, uh, the answer is no. Chris says it's rude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. Uh, Eric, great to meet you. Great to see you, Seriously. Chris. What Pleasure. a lovely, what a lovely what a, guest. What a great team. Can we have a round of applause for a Thank lovely you. guest, please? Um, yeah, come on, let's do it. Yeah.